Mark. My name is Three, not Dwayne. All right. Thank you. Dwayne, uh, obviously you're... No. <laughs> three? Yes, sir. Uh, Mark Schwartz, ESPN. <laughs> That's right. Call him three. Three NBA championships for Mr. Dwayne Wade. That's two back-to-backers for the Miami Heat. LeBron gets his second ring and starts to make a case for being one of the greatest of all time. This is Overtime Sports Radio. This is Rick from Just Man Talk. I'm here with my man Tipsy. What's up, Tipsy? What's good, Rick? Let's get into it. Yes, sir. We got Mr. Fuego going to sit in on this one. How you doing, Mr. Fuego? Oh, I'm all good. I was happy. I had two hours of sleep, and I still, I'm still happy. <laughs> you you still been partying since the uh, man, since the last shot, I'll right? Tell you like this, if I if I was in if I was in South Beach, man, I I'll be in some shit right now. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, man. So Game Seven NBA Finals. Uh, of course, the Heat win four to three in the uh, best of seven series. Take it from a uh, what should have been a game six winner from the Spurs. They took took that right out from them, and then basically in the last two minutes, uh, I'll have to give it up. LeBron did kind of assert himself. He said kind of. Kind of. <laughs> <laughs> he asserted himself. I mean, he had, look, he had, he had some gift-wrapped points there. He had some turnovers late, uh, very untimely turnovers, uh, you know, that kind of helped him get where he needed to be. Uh, but when the, when he needed to, to make the shots, he instead of passing them off like he used to do, uh, taking that extra pass instead of he just decided, hey, this is my game, this is my team, I'm going to win it, I'm going to stick this three. He sticks the three, he comes back with a deuce at the end, and basically wills his team to victory. So there you go, heat and win, kind of the way uh, we thought it would end. Actually, we thought, it, you know, I think tips you had him at it winning a game six, um, winning in six games. Of course, they took it to seven with the uh, the Spurs. You know, really slammed them down there. But a great series, guys. I'll tell you what. I haven't watched a whole lot of NBA Finals, but if if they were all like this, I'd watch them every year. What do you think? Most definitely. Like this is, I put it out there on my Facebook page. This is probably one of the best, if not the best, NBA Finals I've ever in my lifetime witness. Like, I've never seen it where the first game is a close game, then they alternate blowouts, then the final two games are just like the most exhilarating, like nail-biting games that you could ever see, especially game six where you pretty much, I pretty much all but gave it to San Antonio on my Facebook page that night and congratulated him, and then five mm-hmm. minutes later, Ray Allen's time a game with the Jesus Shuttleworth-style three-pointer. That was just, <laughs> I mean, ridiculous. Like, who couldn't, who could believe that that was going to happen? Everybody knew the Spurs. Even the people in the arena knew that the Spurs was winning. They had the trophy. They had it roped off. They had the trophy ready to come out and present it to the Spurs. And they had to put it all back. Because the Spurs just couldn't hold the lead. Even people left early, tried to beat down the doors to get back in when they heard that the game was going into overtime in game six. So I don't think I've ever seen anything better. Nah, I can't say I have. Usually I don't. If I'm rooting for a team, I want my team to win in the blowout regardless. But this was some this was some good stuff right here. I, I was really I lost some years of my life. Um, cause I was having like four heart attacks, like no lie. I gave it to the Spurs too in Game Six. I, I shouted out McGrady, and it it was uh it was bad. D- Tipsy and Rick, y'all, yeah. did y'all see that? Um, I think Tipsy, you might have had the picture of uh, you know that that one commercial was it State Farm with a with a look, the old man is fishing the the one dollar bill, and he's like, oh, you almost had it. They had a yeah. I posted that. Yeah, earlier. Tipsy, right, right. T- Tipsy posted that drink, but with with the NBA trophy and the Spurs reaching. Right. <laughs> I was like, wow. Well, talk about the range of emotions you went through. I mean, Fuego, you're a big LeBron fan. Oh, I mean, the, the range of emotions you had to go through from, you know, say two minutes okay. to the end of the game I, six I, I'll, to I'll the end like of this. the game last night had to be like a roller coaster ride. I'll, I'll tell you like this. I was like, 
I was like, you stupid ass mother, don't shoot that. That's what's up. That's LeBron right there. Yeah, that's that's what I did. So I, I, in one breath, my wife's like, what the hell's wrong with you? Like, are you serious? You just said F him. He's, <laughs> I'm about to lose respect for him. And then you said in the, in the same breath. I'm like, yeah, man, that's how it went. And then when Ray hit that shot, I was not expecting that. I was uh, not expect. I was like, oh my! But you know what? That is why Ray is who he is. He didn't have. He doesn't have to even look. He doesn't have to look. He knows where everything is on the court. That's like, yo. That's why he's the greatest shooter of all time. Nasty. No, he just he just backpedaled to the three point line it. and just threw it up. Perfect form, all net. That's he's a shuttle's work. I'm telling, and you know, part of their success, man, is is that dude. Like he. Work with LeBron on shooting. You can even tell because some you could watch LeBron and you'll watch the confidence that Ray has, and you'll see it, how that's different from last year with LeBron when he shoots. And I'm like, wow. Yeah. I mean, you saw incidents though in in this playoff run of LeBron kind of you know being a little hesitant to do stuff, but you know that's that's what it is, man. It was it was just crazy, man. It's game seven, two series like that. <laughs> Alternating wins yeah. and stuff. You know, it was it was crazy though. But yeah, it was definitely definitely a roller coaster ride. And and you know when you look at this series and you look at the differences in the games, uh, just a couple of games ago, the heroes from games four and five, uh, you know, were almost non-existent in games six and seven. Yeah. It's ju- it's just insane how you can go from you know in one moment uh, knocking down a record number of threes. Uh, for for a championship game or for for a, a finals, and then you're not even in the game. You're not even a factor in the in the biggest game of the year. I mean, it's just yeah, real, amazing. Real, real talk. I'm not even trying to hate on Green because I like Green when he was in uh, Cleveland. I, I really you know liked him on that team. But he's just a shooter. Like he's not he's not even a catch and shoot. He's a set shooter. If you if you leave anybody wide open, you leave my son wide open like that, he might hit threes. Like, that's just what it is. Like, he's wide open. It's still remarkable, and it was great. I'm not going front, but I'm like, why did it take the Heat six games to do that? Like, really? Like, I would let – I'm telling you, I always say I would let Duncan and them try to beat me because I knew them being of age now, up in age, they wasn't going to be able to beat you alone. It was going to be one of those role players, and I'm like, take them out of the game, man. Because you already knew they could shoot. You already knew Gary Neal could shoot. Why would you leave him open like that? I mean, and that's what it was. You know, he just – and then he lost that confidence, so even open, Green wasn't hitting nothing last night. He hit one. One for 12. Yep. One for yep. six three points. Yep. Uh, I mean, that's insane. I mean, as a team, he shot 37%. Yep. You cannot win shooting 37%. Yo, Flat Brady out. probably punched him in their face, yo, when he got in the locker room. I'm telling you. <laughs> <He> probably- <laughs> Brady – did he even get in any of the games? He just sat in road sweat. Did, he got in the game. He got in the game twice in the I think the uh, game three and four blowouts. He got in well, for like a, a, a. He got garbage time. Yeah. Oh yeah. But Grady definitely. is no better than Jawan Howard. Jawan Howard stayed in the suit all season. All he did was no kick over time. stuff in the locker room, and, uh, and <laughs> all he did was kick over stuff in the locker room during the Pacers series. That's just about as, as much energy as he exerted, and he got two rings for that. And you got to get a second ring. Now, at least he played last year. But this dude is not playing this year. He's determined to stay around and get five <laughs> rings. So he can get one to all the Fab Five so that they could all have a championship ring. He's going to be on the roster until he's like 50. <laughs> this, guy, this guy is ridiculous, yo. He was the happiest person in the locker room, hugging and crying and stuff. That you play one day. You got a T-shirt. You rock the suit all playoffs. All play. What about young boy? What's his name? Um, Jarvis, uh, Bernardo or whatever. Bernardo, you know? yeah. He ain't dude. Man. Yeah, that that is. He just came from the. He was in the D League. They drafted him a couple of years back, and he just came up like Pittman last year. So oh. he got a ring for not doing nothing. <laughs> like they. I mean, yo, I will take it. I mean, I will take the ring. I'll, yo, I will take the whole man. You making like a million dollars for sitting there? I mean, you probably got to practice, don't get me wrong, and do all the workouts to not play. I mean, that's... that's I mean, I'll take the ring and the championship bonus check. And that's be it. Good. That's it. I mean, when you really look at it, it was, you know... I mean, Chalmers got 14 points, but Dwayne Wade and LeBron James, 
Mm-hmm. I mean, you're talking 60 points there. Uh, Chris Bosh, zero. zero. Mike Miller, zero. I mean, no contributions there whatsoever. Shane Battier comes in. He knocks down 18 in 6-8 uh, shooting. I mean, that's a clutch performance there. That's what I'm that saying. Is clutch, and that's what I told somebody. I was having a conversation with somebody who is uh, calls himself a Spurs fan, but I believe he's just a real strong Miami Heat hater. I try to tell him that. I try to tell him that. Regardless, he was talking about some put Boris Diaw on James, and he won't score. Blah, blah, blah. I like, look. That doesn't matter. All the shooters need to do is shoot. Somebody needs to come up big. If if um, what's his name? Chalmers can get 15 to 19 points, and somebody can do their version of Mike Miller for this game, then the Heat will win. Mm-hmm. Mike Miller just didn't have it this game, but Shane Battier, who hasn't shot well all series, all, all playoffs, all really, playoffs. Came, through, came through when he needed to come through and dropped six. At one point, he had five in a row. Yep. Three points. And they weren't all wide open shots. Some of them were contested. And, and a bobble. And, and bobble. Three points. <laughs> and they were all net. Like, they weren't. Yeah. Rattling around, they weren't bank shots. He was hitting all net. Yeah. So if you get con- contributions like that from your bench players, especially bench players who haven't done that well all season, and those extra points come in, I mean, there's there's nothing you can do. Not to mention the Spurs were already they were tired because they played a lot of minutes in overtime two days prior. Plus the the feeling of having the championship basically just pried right out of your fingers. And have to come back and try to get through all that, plus being tired. It just wasn't in the cards for the Spurs to win. You look at the emotional, I mean, ride they had to take. I mean, they had to be. I mean, they, everybody in the, the stadium, everybody watching, you guys all knew. We all knew. They won that game. It was over. Yeah. It was done. And then they have to go in that locker room afterwards and realize, man, we got to go play another game. We had this thing. The trophy was in our hands. I mean, that pretty much sealed their fate right there, I believe. Yeah. I'm, I'm with you. I mean, at first, I'll, you know, my thing is that I knew the Spurs would come. They're not gonna, they're not gonna fold and get blown out. I knew that wasn't gonna happen. But I just seen the. I mean, it, it, I'm talking about the legs. Forget the will and every, but the legs. Like you seen Parker did not. Parker was gassed after Game Six. Like he was done. You know what I mean? And and uh, Duncan, he tried his best. Like I said, if that would have been Game Six, he probably would have hit that tip in. Or that little hook shot. But right. It, it, that well, I mean, you figure, you look at this, uh, Duncan played 43 minutes, Parker 36 minutes, uh, Green 36 minutes on 1 of 12, Parker was 3 for 12. I mean, these guys, like, they were gassed, man. They were done. Everything they had, they, they knew they had to, to win this game in game six because they didn't want it to go to game seven. And they had it in their hands, and they let it go, and it cost them a championship. I mean, so, they, and they will I'm not you, get that game six loss is like the equivalent of winning the lottery, going out and buying a whole bunch of stuff, and then the lottery people tell you that they got the numbers mixed up. <laughs> like it's just it it's just it has to be the most gut wrenching feeling ever to be that close. I don't never seen any sport where they're that close and they can't finish it off. Especially like that, a team that's, that's like demoralizing. that. Even for a veteran team, that is a demoralizing feeling to know that yeah. you have to come back and play again, and now the other team is, is smelling blood. That's it. And even then, I mean, it was still a great game. They still had a chance to win it at the end. Um, they were tied up at the half. I think they were down by two at the half, whatever. And, I mean, they still had a chance to win this game at the end, and I think so, they just yeah. physically – ran out of gas when we come back we're going to get into some of the individual performances what does this mean for lebron's legacy you know where does this take him where does this put him in the pantheon of greatest athletes of all time we'll talk about that and more when we come back on overtime sports radio what up what up everybody it's your boy fuego beats back and i'm letting you know that if you're looking for the latest clothing and accessories look no further than jsnlonline.com jsnl has the latest t-shirts they got sunglasses watches anything that you need so make sure you guys check out jsnlonline.com today and use fuego beats radio as your promo code to get 15 percent off that's jsnlonline.com fuego beats radio as the promo code and remember stay connected
You think Doug Gottlieb makes things uncomfortable? Wait until you hear Tipsy and Rick on Overtime at FuegoBeats.com. Welcome back to Overtime Sports Radio. This is Rick from Just Me and Talk. I'm here with Tipsy and Mr. Fuego. How you doing, guys? Chilling. Oh, what's good, man? Let's, we're ready to rock and roll. Yes, sir. All right, so we're talking Spurs Heat Game 7 Championship. Uh, Miami won. Obviously, everybody knows that by now. Popovich gave a little speech afterwards. What I'd like to do, and you know, I don't know if you guys know this, but I have uh, a little case of ESP. You know, I can read minds. I can tell you what the truth, what people are telling. It's kind of like being able to, you know, read somebody's face or their body language. Well, I, I kind of watched, I watched this, uh, this post-game uh, news conference with Popovich, and I, I got a sense he wasn't telling us exactly what was on his mind during this, this, this news conference. So what I'm going to do, guys, is I'm going to give you, I'm going to tell you what he, I, you're going to hear what he's got to say, then I'm going to tell you what he really meant to say, what he what he wasn't going to say in front of everybody, but what he was actually thinking in his mind. So, Mr. Fuego, if you would, go ahead and roll that clip. As of now, what was the difference? Uh, I thought LeBron and Dwight were great tonight. I hate and, him. Uh, Shane off the bench was great, and we really he didn't sucks. match that. 37% shooting. Once again, a lot of turnovers. Was, was poise an issue at all out there for you tonight, did you feel? No, they were just... Ginobili playing. sucks. Ginobili Tim sucks. Ginobili he sucks. Fit, he knew he wasn't going to get too many more chances at this at age 37. That said, the relationship all of you have, how difficult is this to swallow? Uh, Tim Duncan's done. He gave up the ball. Gosh, I hate him. I wish I had LeBron. Here, uh, led by Timmy. Uh, I'm, really I'm told for this shit. They did a fantastic job getting to where they got. Get me out of here. It was pretty incredible. Thank you, Coach. Appreciate it. I mean, that's the way I saw it, guys. I mean, his body language was clearly saying something different than what he was saying there. You could tell by the look on his face. He was not a happy camper. He knew this game is this whole series should have been over in game six. And for it to have gone to a game seven uh, was just unacceptable. I, I have a question. How much of a responsibility for the loss is, uh, is Popovich's blame? How much, what percentage do you put on him? Uh, for for losing this series and some of the moves or, or non-moves that he made down the stretch of both Game 6 and 7. Uh, Tips, you want to go in? I'm going to say Popovich, like, 10%. Like, 10% of it is his fault. And I'd say it's that low a number because he's had the same team. He knows what this team can do. He trusts this team. He kept this team fresh to make this run to the playoffs. He did everything he's supposed to do. He's been there since Tim Duncan's been there. He Since Ginobili came, since Autumn came, they've had the same pretty much core and just kind of used, you know what I'm saying, replaced the replaceable parts. So you can't out-coach athleticism. I mean, you can out-coach another coach. You can out-scheme another coach. But sometimes just athleticism will win out regardless of how good a coach you are. You saw it happen to the Pistons, to the Lakers when they beat the Pistons in the finals, when Shaq and them was trying to go for four in a row. Like, you know, like you you just see it happen. Like, sometimes the more athletic team, which those Los Angeles Lakers were not that athletic outside of Kobe Bryant, because Shaq was hobbled, they were just well coached by Phil Jackson. And that wasn't enough to overcome the athleticism that the Pistons had. And the athleticism that the Miami Heat had wasn't – there's not enough coaching for the Spurs to overcome that. Do you agree with that, Fuego? Yeah, I mean, I'll say I feel like it's a little more than 10. I th- I'll put a little 15 20% for game six, that is. Only because I wouldn't have taken Tim out – as far as rebounding, it's almost like what what uh, 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 Vogel did in in the Pacers series in the game one when uh, LeBron had that layup and they took Hibbert out. I feel like that because I feel like he would have made the difference, at least alter or not, you know, boss out of position in that last one that he got to Ray Allen. So that part, but again, I mean, to to what Tipsy was saying, it I do agree with the fact that you can't. I mean, you know, you can't. I mean, if a person's better than you, they're better than you. I don't care how good of a coach <laughs> or how much you know of the game. If if the team is just better and more athletic and have more, you know, uh, I guess you say endurance and energy, you know what I'm saying? You you can do nothing about it, you know, but you can right. do it so much. And um, 
You know that you know Popovich didn't really make them miss free throws in Game Six. You know well, Ginobili Green. and 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 uh, Leonard. So yeah, well, Green not- missed his first five shots. That's what I started blaming him. I mean, a guy's in there. He's that. I mean, if he's Cold. if he's just not hitting anything, at some point you got to get him out of there and give somebody else a shot. You know, I don't know. McGregor. I mean, I'm sure he didn't have anybody else on the bench to throw in there at that point. But uh, at some point, you just got to say, you know, this guy is not on tonight. You got to get him out of there. You got to shake things up. You got to try something different. Um, I don't know, but I agree, ten percent. And basketball is a little different. Football, I think. The coach can have a bigger impact uh, you know, when you're talking about scheming and things of that yeah, nature. Yeah. And basketball, it's more of managing the minutes and and the matchups, kind of like hockey's the same way. You know, you're you're putting your guys up against the guys you want them to go against, putting your small team out when you want to, and your your big team out when you need to. So, uh, I would agree with that. Players play, coaches coach. What it, it always comes down to the players anyway. So, what's this do for LeBron's legacy, guys? So. We're talking about you know clutch performances. <clears throat> you look at LeBron's stats. He was 12 for 23 from the field, five for 10 from three point range, and eight for eight from the line, and that's clutch. When you get to the line in a, in the game seven, and you're the man, you've got to make those shots. Jordan did, and Wade actually came through, eight for eight from the line, two for two now. So no. If you look at it, he's 28 years old. When Jordan was 28, he had one championship. Mm-hmm. Uh, LeBron's got two. Uh, at 28, Jordan had two MVPs. LeBron's got four. Um, does that make him the best of all time or just one of on his way to becoming possibly the best? I mean, I don't think he's the best of all time yet until he's done. You know what I'm saying? We can make that argument then. I, I, I would just see how, how much he gets, what he gets. I mean, but as far as legacies, I, I think he's good. You know what I mean? If he retired tomorrow, he's retiring as one of the, the top, like I said, one and two, him, Jordan, and I, I'm sorry, I'm going to put Kobe below because Kobe has never taken a bum team to the to the uh, championship ever. You know what I'm saying? You can argue that, but, yo, he had two seven-footers and one a, a dude that's an all-star, and that's – Powell Gasol at that time was an all star, you know what I mean. So it's not it's not like he took Smush Parker and Kwame Brown <laughs> to the to the <laughs> like like that was if you look at the Cavalier team in 07, Daniel Gibson is your your second best player, really. I mean, when is I mean really? That's all I'm saying. It's like wow. So I I can't you know I can't say that you know we can sit there and and we should never you know I don't like comparing to Jordan anyway. Because it's different eras, but if you had to, I wouldn't do it until he's done. You know, see how many rings, see how many more MVPs, final MVPs. See if he ever starts scoring like crazy and wins another scoring title and all that stuff. You know what I mean? If we're talking stats and all that, right? You know, but um, tipsy. I mean, you- y'all say twelve rebounds, four assists, um, only two turnovers. He had two steals. I mean. He was a presence, a dominating presence on the floor. Yeah. And, and, you what know, you th- another thing, when they say, you know, and I don't know if you guys agree, because I know, you know, Rick, we've talked about it before as far as clutch. To me, to bring your team, you're down 10. At the beginning of the fourth quarter, you're pretty much almost done. I mean, except for if you're LeBron and them. And he drops 18 in the fourth quarter. To me, even though Ray Allen hits that big clutch shot, to me, that's a, a clutch gene, too. It's not the last second shot. But I'll take it any day if somebody could bring me back and win the game for me just bringing me back. That's cool. Because if he didn't do that, Ray Allen's three doesn't matter. You know what I'm saying? So when everybody's saying, oh, what's clutch, you know, clutch, clutch, Jordan didn't make every clutch shot. You know what I'm saying? We only know, as, like I said, I'm 30 years old, so I only remember, and if I stick to what I remember and didn't do any research, all I know is Jordan winning. I don't remember Jordan when he lost. You know what I'm saying? You guys um, uh, um, that's a little older than me might remember that out there, and, and you know, as far as our listeners and stuff, I don't know Jordan because I like basketball from, like, 90 to now. So I didn't see him really go through – those those pistons when they used to bust his ass, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, but, right. 
But, I mean, as far as legacy goes, man, I, I think it's intact. I think it's straight. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and off, man, it's, it's, it's crazy. But it was good for him to do that. Just so a lot of, I mean, what can you really hate on now? You'll find, they'll find something. But what could you really say? He can't yeah, do it there's not force? much. <laughs> There's not much that you can really say. His legacy is, you know, like Fuego said, it's still it's still growing. He's only 28. He's very accomplished at 28. He had everything but the championships. Now he's got two championships. So all he can do from here is go up. Statistically, he will end up being better to, better than Jordan for the simple fact that Jordan retired twice and missed a total of about three seasons. Mm where he could have padded his stats and possibly won th- three more championships. Yeah, they could have won you know? four so peated. They could have had a six peat. Yeah. You know, really? they could have won six, seven in a row. Really? You know what I'm saying? So who knows? You know, Jordan felt he did what he had to do. And if they're tra- when they're always talking about great players, the greatest player, Jordan's the greatest player they've ever seen, it's more based on – it's based on his championship rings, but it's more based on – the statistics and stuff that he put up. LeBron is not going to win six, seven, eight scoring titles. He's just not. He's not that type of player. He's more of the Magic Johnson mold where he's going to consistently average about 25, 26 points a game and eight assists and eight rebounds. Like, that's his style. He does that with ease. Like, he can do that in his sleep. If he wanted to, if he wanted to be selfish and score 35 points a game, he can score 35 points a game without a problem you know he's going to play a long time at least until he's probably about 40 because of his size the way he takes care of himself you know he doesn't really get injured that much so you know if he can keep that up and i say if he stays with miami they'll probably win next season you know if he gets a three-peat and he ends up with five or six championships before it's over you know you gotta put him Mm -hmm. above jordan because when people talk about jordan they just really when fans talk about Jordan, they just count rings. When critics and sports people talk about Jordan, they count rings plus all the other side statistics like that. So if he ends up with six rings and his stats are better, you've got to put him, if not over top of Jordan, at least, you know, at a, at a 1A. But I see him in another 12 years probably being the best basketball player that I ever played. And you know what? They're going to bash me for this, and I know Hiawatha. Ne- AKA Nemesis. He's going <laughs> he might get on me and that's why you know um we always have these talks or you know back and forth but I look at even when you're talking about just just the fact that when Jordan played, you know what I mean, in the game back in the 80s, he couldn't get out of the East. Nobody ever talks about 7 years to get out of the East. LeBron went out of the East quick. 4 years, boom, he's out the East, but the West Back in Jordan's day, they really – it was a couple of teams that was even – we even talk about. You know, they weren't heavy like they are now and in LeBron's era. So, if you flip-flop that, you can say, you know, it's kind of even right there. You couldn't get out the East, hey, I couldn't get past the West. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's, yeah. that's the way – really, if you want to think about it. And, and also, when you're looking at who guarded Jordan, you never had a 6'11 or 6'10 like Paul George guarding Jordan. Cat Hornacek. Jeff Hornacek is guarding Michael Jordan. Really? Yeah. So you telling me if Steve Kerr guarded LeBron, he would he would shut him down? That's like, <laughs> like, you, really? that's like, that's like you trying to guard me there, Mr. Fuego. That, <laughs> lightning quick moves. Yep, that's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> that, but that that's the funny part. And I'm like, you know, it's not bashing Jordan because I th- still think he's the man and he will remain the man until somebody takes that, you know, that title from him. But I'm just saying – if you want to break it down, like I could break it down like that. I could also break it down and say, hey, LeBron's responsible for the the best offensive player, and he has to be the best. He has to be the best defender and the best offensive player. Or Jordan had to be was the best defense. I mean, offensive player when he played with Pippen through those championship years because Pippen took on the the hardest uh, offensive player on the other team. Yeah, so, Pippen guarded Barkley. Pippen guarded you know all these other players. Drexler. Oh. The, like, the Jordan, the guys that Jordan had to guard, or that were guarding him, you know, for lack of a better phrase, some of them were just 
average white guys. Like, they weren't even <laughs> Mark Price. Yo, Mark, you see. know, like, all these people that had no business guarding him that he could take advantage of. That's it. If, they, if somebody like LeBron was on him, I don't think, I mean, he'd still be a great player, but he would get shut down a lot more than he did. And, and you know what? Off every, all of that, Rick, really, there's only two teams that come to mind that actually had a team and had one great player, and I feel like that's the Ma Mavericks in 11 and the 04 Pistons. I think they had not one guy, you know what I'm saying? Like, but usually on these dynasties, like the Pist or the, the old Pistons with Joe Dumars and them, the old Lake, the old Lakers, and even the Lakers of the um, you know, uh, 2000s with Kobe and Shaq. You always had to think about two people. You never had to think about one person. So when Jordan and Pippen played, you could lead, you could try to shut Jordan down, but you got to think Pippen could drop 30 on you too. You know what I'm saying? So it's not like if Pippen was hurt. Because when I, I don't know if you guys remember, there was a stretch when Pippen was hurt in the 90s, and they were losing games like crazy. And right. Jordan was like, what the hell's going on? Exactly. He'll explain. So, you know, and, and it's not, not taking only, nothing away from him, but that's just what yeah, it is. And not, not, only, not only that, let's look, let's look at it from this perspective. LeBron, Cleveland Cavaliers were terrible. They got LeBron. They got good and so good to the point – they had the league's best record twice, and they went to the NBA Finals. He leaves. Meanwhile, the Miami Heat won in what, 06? Yeah. 2006, they won the championship. In 2006, they had Shaq. They had a young, fresh D-Wade, you know, and basically, you know, they had Gary Payton, but basically a bunch of role players. That team won the, that team won the championship, and they never even really got out of the first round after that. LeBron comes to Miami along with Chris Bosh. But they've gone to three straight NBA Finals. This guy, people that say he doesn't, you know, do this, he doesn't do that, he makes teams better. He took a team like Miami, who was decent and who had winning records but really wasn't doing much otherwise, and they've been to three straight NBA Finals and won two out of the three and could possibly win three out of the four. Exactly. That's something that we never got a chance to see with the Michael Jordan um, because by the time he went to the Wizards, he was already pretty much old and washed up. Like, <laughs> so it just wasn't really, you know, it wasn't really any fun watching that. But, you know, we're seeing it with LeBron James and showing his greatness that he can make a good team better and he can make a crappy team great. Like, it's, you don't see that a lot with, with, uh, with players. And you saw it with, uh, Kevin Garnett and Ray Allen going to Boston and taking that mediocre Boston team to win the NBA championship, you know, and go to back-to-back -back NBA finals. So it's, um, you know, you got to give him his props. There's people that are still going to hate, and, you know, I've seen haters. I have, I have a friend who's a close friend of mine who is the absolute LeBron James hater, who told me last night that once LeBron loses his athleticism, he'll be terrible because he has no skill. Now, that's because he couldn't find anything else to hate on, but he had to try to say that his talent, what he does besides score, like pass and play defense and read defenses, doesn't count as skill, that it's just all athleticism, which is the stupidest thing I've ever heard. And because he's a Knicks fan, I let it pass because they suck. And <laughs> Melo's never going to get a ring. So, you know, Melo keeps falling further and further back by the pack. Like, he's not going to catch up to them. I mean, Darko, he's the only one in the top five of that draft that doesn't have a ring. So he's basically calling him the Tebow of the NBA. <laughs> all, all athleticism, no talent. <laughs> basically. So look, when we come Darko, back. Keep in mind, Darko Milicic has a championship ring with the Detroit Pistons. Yeah. The first, the second, the fourth, and the fifth picks in those drafts have rings. Melo's the third pick, no ring. Exactly. Well, you make a strong case. Look, we we talk about Tebow. We come back. We're gonna find out what's going on with your team up there in New England, man. They're falling apart. <laughs> Man, man, this could man. be this could be Brady's longest year of his life, and probably the last one he'll ever play. We'll talk about that and more when we come back on Overtime Sports Radio. 
You're listening to Fuego Beats Radio, the number one online talk radio station. Log in, FuegoBeats.com, YouTube, Mr. Fuego Beats. What's going on? This is Fuego Beats from Fuego Beats Radio, and I want to tell everyone to check out the greatest sci-fi radio station out, Super 564 on Blog Talk Radio. They have the best topics, including sci-fi films, comic books, video games, and they even have a featured artist segment for musicians weekly. So if you have an obsession with sci-fi films, music, or video games like me, then this is the station for you. Make sure you check them out on blogtalkradio.com forward slash super564. That's blogtalkradio.com forward slash S-U-P-A-F-I-6-4. All right? And remember, stay connected. And welcome back to the Overtime Sports Radio Show on FuegoBeats.com. This is Rick from Just Man Talk. I'm here from Man Tipsy and Mr. Fuego. How you doing, guys? Fine. All right. Now, Tipsy, this this uh, subject here is going to be close to your heart. I'm sure you've been following this. Uh, basically, we were talking about Mr. Hernandez up there in uh, New England. Is uh, They've apparently issued an arrest warrant. Uh in connection of the murder investigation of Odin Lloyd, whose body was found near uh, his home in the Massachusetts area. Uh, basically, the reports are the arrest warrants are uh, are coming out for obstruction of justice uh, with uh, for Hernandez. He uh, you know has his, uh, lives in North Attleboro, Massachusetts. Um, basically, uh, Mr. Odin Lloyd was found dead in an industrial park less than a mile. From his home, uh, basically, uh, I mean, there's conflicting reports. Some people say that the uh, there's, the, I think, the radio station up there is reporting that there has been a warrant for his arrest filed. Uh, no, the uh, TV station hasn't confirmed it yet. Um, but basically, ABC is reporting that uh, video surveillance from Hernandez's neighborhood has been found that shows Hernandez with Odin Lloyd and two others. Only hours before the body was found, Thomas Moore, the manager of Rumor Nightclub in Boston, told the Boston Herald that Hernandez and Lloyd were at Rumor together last Friday. Hernandez and Lloyd sat together in a VIP section at a roped-off table with several other people. Uh, The police searched Hernandez's home for a second day on Wednesday. Hernandez was questioned by police on Monday night, according to SI.com. And unrelated to this case, a lawsuit has been refiled in federal court in Florida in which a man alleges that Hernandez shot him in the face and caused numerous injuries which required facial reconstruction surgery. The lawsuit was originally filed June 13th, but four days later the case was dismissed because of a paperwork error, according to TMZ. Uh, So basically, Alexander Bradley claims that he and Hernandez were with a group in February at Tootsie's Club in Miami when the two got into an argument. Later, as they were driving to Palm Beach County, Bradley c- claims that Hernandez shot him with a handgun, causing him to lose his right eye. USA Today is reporting, uh, citing a police spokeswoman, that Palm Beach County police will not be investigating if Hernandez was involved in a February shooting without the cooperation of the alleged victim. The case... Uh, could be reopened if Bradley contacted the Sheriff's Violent Crimes Unit. Um, so now Bristol uh, District Attorney Samuel Sutter's office said investigators were asking for the public's help to find a silver mirror cover believed to have broken off a car between Boston and North Attleboro. According to the Attleboro Sun Chronicle, Massachusetts State Police are looking for another rental car in connection with the homicide investigation, it's a 2013 silver Chrysler 300. So we're wow. you're looking at a lot of things now. Also, rumors are that uh, apparently the the uh, obstruction of justice um, warrant that is going to be filed if it hasn't already um, stems from the fact that Hernandez handed his phone in via his lawyer to police in pieces yeah. also that he destroyed several cameras and the security system at his home and other rumors have reports that 
he hired a cleaning service to come in and completely strip clean his house the day after the supposed murder. So you're looking at someone who, I mean, he came into the league already with issues, uh, you know, which is why he fell so far in the draft. And it, it appears, and, and there was also reports that the guy who's found the charges against him for shooting him in the face is uh, is a noted drug dealer who has been has done time um, for drug charges. So, I mean, this guy, I mean, it's not looking so good up there for New England, is it? Tipsy. Man, this is the worst thing that could ever happen to my squad. This guy, Hernandez, obviously is is or used to be some type of gangster. And these problems, why he fell in the draft, why he, you know, it's too many things going on and, like, there's so many different stories that are going on with this, it's hard to figure out exactly what is true and what isn't true. I know about the lawsuit being filed for shooting the guy in the face. If this guy killed the guy or is covering up somebody that killed the guy, obviously he doesn't care about his football career. Like, this is this is going to just trash him, and it's not really going to hurt the Patriots so much because – Tight ends are interchangeable. They can pretty much throw any tight end out there, and as long as they catch the ball, Tom Brady will make them look good. But this is or this is mind-boggling. It's bad enough you got to worry about Gronk getting healthy, having the back surgery, the four surgeries on his forearm. Now you have a tight end that's possibly going to go to prison. He just got this new contract. This guy is going to go to prison. If any of this is true, yeah. if they can prove the obstruction of justice, this guy is going to prison, and – if they pin anything else on them, if they can get them for obstruction and they can connect them to this murder in any way, shape, or form, that's going to prison forever. I mean, this is the all-time stupidest thing you could possibly do. All you got to do is play football. But you're still involved in whatever you were involved in in college and whatever else is going on. Yeah. You know, you're shooting drug dealers. You're riding around with drug dealers, you know, which is already a no-no, which means you're probably using your NFL money Exactly. To, do, to purchase to purchase drugs and to traffic drugs. That's why you're renting cars. You're an NFL star. You have millions of dollars. Why are you renting cars? So you the, know, the, the contract, a, five year, forty million dollars, mm. and came just months after the team locked up Gronkowski through the 2019 season, which would have set them up on those bookends for the next four to five years. I mean, now you're looking at starting the season without either one of them or Welker. Now, you can talk about Amadola and whatever. I mean, yeah, whatever. He's not Wes Welker, okay? The you're signing talking of Tim Tebow, I don't mean to cut you off, but the signing of Tim Tebow makes a lot of sense. It makes me believe that they knew this was coming with Aaron Hernandez because this story just kind of popped out of the blue on ESPN where it's like, you know, they were talking about Gronk, talking about Gronk, talking about Gronk, then one day it's, oh, the police are trying to question Hernandez to connection with somebody that got found a mile from his crib. Like, the Patriots must have known this was coming. And so they were trying to be proactive and make the signing of Tebow look like, oh, they're trying to give him a chance to be a quarterback. Well, really, they want him to be a tight end because they pretty much know for certain that at least one of these tight ends is not coming back this season. Hey, look, Fuego, you, yeah. you want to know how weak things are up there in New England right now? <laughs> Vladimir Putin... The, the president of Russia went into Kraft's house and stole his freaking Super Bowl ring. They're taking everything from what? him. Because they're all punks up there now. What do you think, Wigo? <laughs> hey, Yo. hey Vlad, yeah, yeah. he was in Russia visiting Vladimir Putin for whatever reason. I guess that's what rich white guys do. They visit Russian <laughs> presidents. But oh, Vladimir man. Putin is a mafia gangster that just happens to be the president of Russia. He rolls hard, and if you let him see your championship ring and he puts it in his pocket and walks off, you got to eat that. Because otherwise, they can find you hanging upside down. They offer to pay for it. <laughs> like they need to hand out. <laughs> Plus, Kraft is a billionaire. He's got two, three billion dollars. So he gets to go get another one made. So leave it <laughs> back, go get another one made before the hit squad comes after you where you whine and you're telling the world that this guy robbed you of a ring. And he's gonna send his little Russian guys over here and just shoot up your house. 
Like, you, you got to eat that. Kraft isn't a gangster. Putin is a gangster. If he takes your ring, you eat that, and you get on the plane, you come back home. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't I don't know, man. That that just sounds all crazy. I, I, I just was tripping when I saw that because, like you said, they were talking about your other tight end, and they was, you know, talking about, oh, he's injured, how long will he be out, all oh, breaking news. The dude is a dumb motherfucker. So pretty much, that's what he said. This dude is stupid. That's all they could have said. And I would have been like, damn. But, like, re- really, I, I just feel like that he's going. It, it almost feels like Jason Williams, if you remember. With right. that done when he shot up his uh, limo driver and shit. Like, it's stupid. Like, I don't know if he's going to get life, but he ain't playing football. That, that, if he gets convicted, and that's, that's a blow. Um, Man, uh, obstruction of justice ain't no joke. I mean,. You know, that's bad, especially in a murder yeah, investigation. True. And then you could get, you know, conspiracy he, after true, the that's fact. True. That's true. You know what I mean? There's a whole other. This is just to get him in and start sweating. Cause you know what I mean? Dude, yeah, that's, I mean, uh, you know, I'm not saying he did it, but, you know, it's, it's somebody He knows something. It. Yeah, exactly. Was there or something. Yeah, so, I mean, I know, man. <laughs> so now it, you have to wonder, I guess the bet now would be who's going to play – um, you know, for the who's got a better chance of playing for New England in uh, the 2013 season? You talking Tim Tebow or Hernandez? <laughs> 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 I, I think right now Tim Tebow's got the upper hand. He might actually see more action. He might be playing tight end. Yeah, yeah. I don't know, Tipsy, how you feel about uh, Tebow playing tight end? <laughs> Tipsy's gone. <laughs> He's out. Oh, really? <laughs> he's gone. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah, he really is. Yeah, he's gone. Link him back. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I mean, this is the thing that kills me, though. I mean, I, I've never had that kind of money. I will never have anybody hand me a contract worth $40 million. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I just can't imagine. I, I mean, I can imagine you know, if somebody said, look, I'm going to pay you 75000 Dude, I don't even want to get a speeding ticket. Cause I might not, I might lose my license and not be able to get to work to make that money. You know what I mean? Oh no, I mean just regular jobs. Like I'm, I'm looking at it like a lot of my boys that, real talk, a lot of my dudes, you know, they did it some time, and now you know some of them, um, at least one of them is doing, or two of them are doing great, and there's a few of them that aren't, and I can't hang, I can't get down with that. Just so plain, plain this guy is looking at losing seventy seven thousand eight hundred and twenty three dollars and fifty three cents. For every game he misses. That's terrible. Oh, my God. 77 large. Man, I can't do that. I can just get in and lose a couple more pounds. I'm 6'4". <laughs> I'll get up there for a little while. I'll give you some, I'll give you one good game, yo. So, obviously. Uh, nobody- tipsy. <laughs> oh, here oh. go Transformers oh. again like last time. <laughs> what? What was that? That's oh, Optimus that's Prime. Yeah, my <laughs> Bumblebee. Bluetooth, like. My Bluetooth earpiece died. <laughs> uh, Optimus Prime just came on like, uh, yeah. Yeah, that was like, oh. Uh, man. Destroying my eardrums. But, so, yeah, it's going to be interesting. I, I, again, and now you look at the uh, the AFC North now. I mean, that kind of that changes things a little bit, doesn't it? Tuh. I, I it changes anything. You said I, what? It don't change anything. Are you kidding me? I don't think it changes anything. Really? Oh, come on now. Explain, Tipsy. <laughs> Seriously. I don't think it changes anything for the simple fact that um they still those pieces pieces like Gronkowski and while they're good pieces, they're very interchangeable, yo. As long as you still got Tom Brady, you can put any receivers in there and they'll catch the ball. Look, you got EJ Manuel <laughs> signed on with the Bills. Okay. You got you got the Jets gonna get better. Okay. Look at the Dolphins, they're gonna be better. The Patriots got so much going on now. I mean, come on, man. This might be the year the Texans actually take that division. Texans take, won't take, take, the division. Take, take the conference, huh? 
Or the Colts. Texas won't take that. Andrew, maybe Andrew Luck's chance. Huh? No. No. <laughs> you know, no, let's is- not get let's not get overly overly excited <laughs> because they're having a couple of tight end issues. Gronk will come back and be ready to play. They can get tight ends. You can, like I said, you can get tight ends anywhere. There's a bunch of free agent tight ends that are decent tight ends that just don't have a spot to play. And if Hernandez is going down, which it looks like he is going to go down, then they can just pick one of them up integrate them into the system. The system is an interchangeable system. You saw what happened when Brady went down. It made Matt Castle. It got Matt Castle a $60 million contract with the Kansas City Chiefs. Like, it, it doesn't matter who's there. The system you can't, is flawless. Look, you, you can't replace 175 receptions, 2,000 yards, and 18 touchdowns. Sure you can. Come on, man. You replace it with yeah. other people that can catch the ball. Like, that, that's all they have to do. Their whole requirement is that they just, can you catch the ball? If you can catch the ball, then you can play there. You've seen you've seen so many different receivers and stuff come through there that catch the ball. I well, mean, look at look, Troy made, Brown. He, everybody, like, Deion Brandt made, was the Super Bowl MVP. What made Hernandez so, I guess, his abilities stand out was his basketball background. Because he, he could, you know, use the body – to put this, put the uh, put his body between the you know, the player, the defender, and the ball, and and he could you know like boxing out in, in the low post. You know what I mean? That's the, and those skills are something that he's been acquiring since high school. You know what I mean? So he had a specific set of skills that made him effective. And Gronkowski is just a monster. He's just a truck. So you know, with hands. So I mean that was that's a just, truck with uh, hands. Yeah, yeah that's it. He's, he's like a truck with hands. I mean, he's fucking unbelievable. So yeah. uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Of course, this story is going to be ongoing. I'm sure we're going to touch it on again and uh, touch on it again next week. Uh, but again, NBA uh, finals are over. Uh, now becomes the longest, most boring part of the sports scene. All we have is golf and baseball. Baseball is fantastic. And I'm going to let you guys handle that from now on. I believe I 77 so more August. days. I have so, nothing to say bah. until September, August. So, so we'll be talking about <laughs> on-base percentages and everything I don't middle know. relievers and all that good stuff. So I'm sure we'll find some interesting topics. You know, we'll, next week I want to get in a little bit into some of the mm-hmm. things that happened during the mini camps. Um, and talk about some of the other off-season moves we're going to start putting together. We've got NBA draft. We'll be talking about that next next week as well as the teams, you know, of course the Wizards jumped up and, and beat the odds and got the third overall pick. Uh, we'll see who they get and how they're going to work them in with John Wall and Bradley Beal and hopefully make a run here locally next year. And anyway, it's been great, guys. Uh, no again, this is Rick from Just Man Talk. You can catch me on JustManTalk.com, on Twitter, at Just Man Talk. And go ahead there, uh, Tipsy, where we can find you at? Definitely find me on Facebook, at uh, Tipsy McStagger. Find me on Twitter, at King5950, and on Instagram, at King5950, which Instagram has videos now. Yes, so sir. be on the lookout for that. I might be doing some extra stuff on there now just to uh, spice it up a little bit. Um, you know, and just be on the lookout. If you're following me, follow me closely. Even in the boring days of summer with sports, I got all the sports updates for you. I got the entertainment news. got whatever you need. You don't even need to watch TV half the time. Just check me out. Excellent. We're definitely going to do that, Mr. Fuego. Yeah, yeah, man. Hit me up, uh, Mr. Fuego Beast at gmail.com. Uh, if you if you want to um, get on the What the Fuego Show, the Artist Highlight Show, just uh, submit your music and um, give us an email at info at FuegoBeats.com. And uh, this week I will be talking about how Kanye West is whack because if you ever name your daughter or child North and your last name is West, that's pretty corny to me. But uh, <laughs> listen to the, for that on I would Monday. love to chime in on that one, by oh, the way. Oh, oh, well, what, right, yeah. right, right. Let's not take away from the fact that Yeezus album bangs. Yeah, but he's whack. Yeezus. He he's whack though. He's he's whack. again. That's another screech. But he got talent. I won't deny that. But we'll talk about it though. Yeah, and don't forget our partners, uh, Superfly sixty four. 
uh, definitely want to catch them if you're into sci-fi, music, movies. Uh, they got you covered on all that. Of course, JSNL Online for all the fresh clothing, all the gear. They got the glasses. They got the watches. You want to definitely check them out. They're great sponsors. Uh, they were down at the uh, 757 uh, selling their shirts. You can actually, if you go to Mr. Fuego's uh, Facebook page, you can see Egypt rocking one of their, their tops. So check that out. And, uh, hey, it's been great, guys. Appreciate it. And we'll catch up with you all next week. Also, go see This is the End. If you haven't seen it, it's hilarious. Check it out. <laughs> is it good? Funny. I'm going to see World War Z uh, Sunday. Okay. I'm, I'm going to see one of those, though. Either you know, that one or Superman. I th- I'm, th- I'm I, hedging I, towards World War Z, though. I need to go see Superman. I heard it, I heard it bangs. Okay. Yeah, some people say good. Some people say bad. The, the critics panned it, but the, the people that liked it, are giving it a high, you know, the 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 people who went to see it said it was great. The regular people, so uh, the I don't care about out. comic book. I don't care about comic book nerds. If a comic book nerd says the Superman sucks, I'm not listening to them because they're comic <laughs> book nerds and they think everything should look just like a comic book. Oh sure, and be, yeah, and be page for page from a comic book. I don't care about that. I just want so to look, be entertained. Are, are you all seriously going to a movie? Are you seriously going to a movie next? So you already saw one. Are you going to a movie, Fuego? Yeah, I'm taking my kids, I think, tomorrow morning to see Superman. All right, so next week on this show, all three of us are going to give a review of the movie that we went to see. Okay. All okay, right. That was- if it's slow, we got to come up with something, so we'll do a segment <laughs> on, on movie yeah. reviews here on the Overtime Sports Radio Show. Again, this is Rick, Tipsy, and Mr. Fuego, and we'll catch you guys next week. <laughs>